Well, what's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the pod at the Palace. Curtis Wilkerson and Scotty Bordelon here with you from Natty State Sports Studios in downtown Fayetteville. You know what day it is? You know what day it is? Hump day. Hump day. <laughs> I'm glad you caught on to that. It's uh, <laughs> it's been the longest. It's been the longest week since last week. It has been the longest week since last week. At least we got a little bit of action for a change. That's kind of nice. For sure. I uh, hope everybody's doing well on this Wednesday morning. We're recording uh, a little after 9 a.m. And I think what we're going to start doing, we're going to give it a give it a shot here. Uh, just doing some shorter episodes in the mornings. And just that, that kind of leaves our afternoons and everything open for news, which is inevitably going to come. I'm not saying it's going to happen today. I hope it does. John dropped the tweet. so He did? It's going to be an insane day? It's going to be an insane day. So, yeah, that's... Speaking of John it's dropping money. tweets, if if you haven't, and this is for you, and I know you have, but anyone who's listening haven't gone and looked at his Jeremy Roach reaction tweet that he put out last night, it was, <laughs> I mean, it was just an A-plus tweet. Really One good. of the better tweets I've ever seen. It's fantastic <laughs> it work. He, he deserves a lot of credit for that. That was great, man. Made by night. Um, I'd also highly recommend people going back uh, and checking out our episode from yesterday. We had, we had Lawson Blake, the Lone Ranger, the last man standing in here. Uh, great perspective from him on just kind of what it's been like from a dude in the locker room uh, going through a coaching change, Must dipping out, all of his teammates leaving, and, and then Coach Cal coming in here. Uh, and then we learned a lot about him. He was good. He was engaging. He was funny. So I, I would, I would yeah. definitely check that out. Yeah. If, I, um, if I'd gotten here a little bit earlier today, I was getting some notes together before we started, I would have clipped up and, and tweeted out, and I, I might still do it, just what he said about um, – you know, his connections to Cal before, yeah. you know, he even came here. He grew up in, in Texas and is, you know, he's got family that were diehard Kentucky fans. And so he's got pictures all throughout the years with, with Cal. So yeah. it's a interesting dynamic now that, that they're back together. No doubt about it. It's awesome. He also, we don't want to spoil it, but we're trying to tease you into listening. Uh, he was also talking about his new and only teammate, Big Z, uh, out of Kentucky and how when they were prepping for Kentucky that he was Big Z for the scout team. Uh, and that gave him an opportunity to, to hoist up a bunch of threes at practice. He enjoyed yeah. that. So I could tell how excited he was <laughs> to talk to, like, tell us about that because he was like, yeah, man, I got to run off some screens and put up some threes <laughs> that, you know, I normally wouldn't put up. So yeah, it was pretty cool. I bet he got a good – I bet he got a good – grade on on how he did being big z and i bet he i bet he did too there's no doubt in my mind so go check that out that was, that was our episode on yet uh on monday no what is today it's home it day tuesday. so it was tuesday yeah. that we put that out uh crazy how this worked and you you turned me on to this but um our 44th episode of the pot at the palace was our big z reaction episode he just so happens to wear jersey number 44 our 45th episode of the Pot at the Palace just so happened to be the Lawson Blake episode. What jersey number does he wear? Weird. 45. I mean, that's crazy. Stars are aligning. Uh, we ain't got nothing for 46 today. This just <laughs> We're just doing it. So No, if somebody wore 46, <laughs> some, some, something might be up with them. Exactly. Um, but we're back to talk some, some crouton because, you know, Arkansas does only have one scholarship player and a walk-on right now. If you're wondering if Cal has been working, because I know people were a little frustrated after the weekend. He was out in L.A. getting an award. Why don't they have a bunch of dudes committed? Hey, Monday he got a commitment from Big Z. Tuesday he was in Atlanta at the Overtime Elite Camp with Chin Coleman, by the way, who's going to yep. be on staff. And he was drawing every eye in the gym while he was getting FaceTime with some priority recruits. I don't know if you were following the, the Overtime Elite Twitter account, but boy, they had a lot of video of Coach Cal walking around out there. Oh. And they were zooming around other coaches. Like you saw Bruce Pearl and some other guys in there, but that thing was glued on Cal and he was rocking the suit. Uh, he looked sharp. People were like, Ooh, why is he in a blue suit? And he doesn't have a rib. Who gives a shit? Who, who cares? Yeah. I caught myself. Who cares? <laughs> All right. He's out there representing Arkansas that's and he's the I sharpest was, dressed man in the building. That's what I did see last night was the comments on like that original video. Obviously it was getting tweeted out, aggregated out in tweets. Yeah. And I saw one person in this market put it out and then there was nothing but comments, but like, let's get this guy some hog gear. Where's this red at? He's still wearing his Kentucky blue. Listen. I don't know if y'all were paying attention during the actual press conference. The man don't see your tweets. Yes. He's not going <laughs> to see them. You're just basically just you're shouting you're shouting at the sky. He's trying to bring you players right now, and, and he brought you one, and he was there selling Arkansas to a couple really 
really important pieces. Uh, a couple incoming freshmen at that overtime elite camp. Santo Cyril is a large human being. Correct. They measured him in at that. It was almost like a combine type setup, and then they were they were running some scrimmage type stuff. He measured in at six foot ten, two hundred and fifty two pounds. Mercy. As yeah, a, we've got him in his profile on our big board, six ten two forty. Yeah. So he's bigger now. Yeah. Than it than at least that was listed. And then he was out there with a 33 and a half inch standing vert, a 39 inch, uh, you know, running start. That's, that's a big boy. That's freaky, dude. That is, that is that's that's freak level stuff, exactly. And they and they basically said that when they were tweeting it out. Um, he's probably, I think, of the five guys who are decommitted from Kentucky right now, he might be the most difficult get for Arkansas because I like I know there are pro options kind of on the table for him, and I think. A lot of these guys say like, "Oh, the, my recruitment's open" or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's the one that I kind of believe it with the most. But what do you got to do? You got to you got to be there. You got to sell him, and you got to remind him of that relationship. And yeah. first opportunity Cal had, there he was. Yeah. Um, and we've already seen that interview from him as soon as he decommitted from Kentucky, saying, "No, like Coach Cal, he called me. He let me know what was going on. It's a business decision. I understand. So we'll see what happens there. But that's a that's a big boy. Yeah. And then." Carter Knox, Scotty, he didn't didn't look like he participated in that. He was there in street clothes. There was a clip of him and uh and Coach Cal dapping it up. So they got some face time there. Uh, but he he measured out also 6'6, 226 pounds. Mercy. On the notes that they put out. Um Yeah, we've got him 6'6, 211. Yeah. I mean, these kids are so these kids are sprouting. They're man. they're thickening up. Yeah. And, and you like to see that before you come and, and play in the SEC, hopefully, right? For sure. And so what I'll say is, one, if if I haven't like officially logged my crystal ball for Carter Knox, consider that in. Like I just I just think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen soon. We need a news alert for whenever you do that. Yeah, we need like a we a do sound effect. We have to get sort. in the uh, we have to get in the Discord, the Dixon Discord. <laughs> um, but I just I just really feel like that's going to happen. But do you remember at the press conference, the intro presser, when Coach Cal said? Yeah, like you can still recruit freshmen, you can still have freshmen, but they better be tough and they better be physical. Yeah. This is what he's talking about. For sure. I mean, these guys are, they're big dudes. Yeah, no doubt about it. And yesterday, um, Billy Richmond decommitted yes. from Kentucky Oh, yeah, we didn't too. talk about that. Yeah. Um, about the last hour, hour 15 before we hopped in here with, with Lawson Blake, I watched extended videos of Billy Richmond in a sectional championship game and then a state championship game. Let me tell you, dude, there's one thing, like, regardless of where this kid goes to college, maybe it's Arkansas. He is going to be ready for the physicality of the league here. Like, you would be – it's almost like you're playing at the Y. Yeah. And it's like call your own fouls type of deal. Like, these officials in Jersey do not blow their whistles for, for just anything. Right. Um, the physicality of the game is going to be um, not new to, to Billy Richmond. I mean, I'll have to show you. It's crazy what they let those kids get away with. I love that. I games. can't wait to see it. Um, Lefty wing. Shot blocker. Yeah, mm-hmm. just kind of a – he's really good, I thought, like baiting kids into thinking that they had – like they just beat him off the dribble. Right. And then he's just such an easy riser. He just like pinned everything to the glass, uh, swatting shots out of bounds. He's got such a smooth jump shot too. Um, I don't, I didn't see, like there, there's not a lot of times where opposing teams in the videos that I saw were just like, all right, we're going to give the ball to whoever Billy Richmond's defending. Um, cause that's just not the wise thing to do when you're sure. probably when you're playing him. So I'll probably need to see a little bit more out of him defensively, but I'm, I'm a fan of, of what I've seen so far. I know I went on a tangent about Billy Richmond, but no, man, that's um, okay. And, yeah, and, and for those who were talk about him yesterday. Yeah. For those who are unfamiliar, just a, a, a borderline five star. He actually is a five star prospect in the, uh, in the 24 seven sports composite, which is just a, an aggregate of, of all the rankings, kind of an average there. Uh, top 25 prospect in the country six. They have him at six, five, 200. I've seen him listed at, at six, six and, uh, and a little bit heavier in some other spots. Uh, Jersey boy, but he spent a lot of time in Memphis as well, yeah. and uh, and a lot of connections there with with Kentucky, but also with Cal, and and he was a guy that we thought uh, right away would be you know maybe one of the easier flips from that class, and then 
he was like the last one right. um, outside of the Travis Perry guy to, to decommit there. But we'll see what happens there with him. We were talking about it, I think, maybe on our Monday episode about how it was kind of weirdly quiet. Well, now he's opened things back up, so we'll probably we'll probably get cooking there, I would imagine, here pretty quick. Just I'm mean, just looking at 24-7. Since he decommitted, they've already got uh, Arkansas listed as warm for him. They do like the cool, go. warm, yeah. whatever, so... Um, he would be a guy I think they got a pretty good shot at, and and you know at if you get, have him and Carter Knox, that's a couple uh, pretty good foundation pieces on the wing Man, that, uh, that you'd certainly certainly would like to have. Um, yeah, so I I mean, Cal's out there, he's cruting, man. It was good to see Chin Coleman out there with him with them glasses on. Yeah, he, he always got them on. <laughs> he's wearing them things, man. I was trying to find him on Twitter. Uh, you just try to follow like all the assistants or whatever, and. Uh, so I just typed in his name in the search, and an account came up, and it was Chin Coleman's glasses. And like it, I couldn't find him on Twitter, but I could find an account about his That's glasses. That's great. Uh, so that was that was kind of funny, but um, yeah. And so I, I think what you can see on one hand is that we're starting to see some movement here with this freshman class, and we'll we'll see what comes of it. But I think I don't I don't I really don't think they're going to get all five of these guys. And I don't know that they want to, but I bet they're going to get the ones that they want. And it, maybe that's three. Maybe that's four. We'll see how it shakes out. Uh, that doesn't mean that that's the top priority or the only thing that they're focusing on. And I think that's important for people to understand, like things are heating up on the transfer portal front as well. Oh, yeah. And and we're going to we're going to talk about in that in just a second. But uh, before we do, I want to. Just take a quick second and tell you guys about our friends over at, at Signature Bank. Signature is a privately held boutique bank uh, that's redefining the banking experience in our region. They blend the warmth and familiarity of a community bank with the sophistication of a commercial bank and the expertise of a private bank to deliver unmatched levels of service. If you're looking for some reasons to bank at Signature, well, there's a lot of them. They're personally invested, business-minded, community-focused, right-sized, and forward-thinking. Make sure you go over and check out one of their locations in Arkansas or Visit the website, www.signature.bank, to learn more. Let's get back to it with some portal news. Um, finally, man, uh, yesterday was kind of a, I don't know, kind of an eventful day on the transfer portal front. We'll talk about the Umar Balo stuff maybe at the end because I wanted to dive into just the front court in general sure. and, and maybe how it could shake out. But, yeah, man, I mean, it seems like there's been some things going on. Uh, you're starting to see an uptick in activity. You're starting to see Arkansas mentioned uh, with some of these teams, not only that are just have contacted guys, but they're in there with them. You love to see it. So I can't think of a better place. Well, I, actually, I can. Let's start with the Dayton kid because that happened okay. earlier yesterday, <laughs> yeah. and we didn't get to talk about it because we did the Lawson Blake interview. We already put him on the board back here behind us, Kobe Brea. Out of Dayton, when you think about Dayton basketball, at least me, I always thought about Deron Holmes because he was the like right, the All American so. forward, uh, really, really good player. But Kobe Brea was a big, big piece of that team, uh, an NCAA tournament team. Just, I don't know what else to call him besides an absolute sniper. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, he was forty nine point eight percent from deep on two hundred and one attempts. That's nuts. That's Reed Shepherd level stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. Forty nine percent in league games on over a hundred attempts and college basketball scouting video, which I watched before we did we started doing this. Sixteen threes from twenty five plus feet out. Just, Ooh, just got so a yeah. got that NBA range. Sniper is is the right way to say it. Um one hundred percentile in catch and shoot. 96th percentile in spot up and 93rd percentile as a pick and roll ball handler. That'll play, man. It's crazy. Yeah. And I I wanted I said this yesterday when we first watched his uh that college basketball scouting video. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying this just because I'm a Phoenix Suns guy. There is a lot of Devin Booker in that jump shot. Yes. 100%. And I think it's because it's it's very up and down, very vertical, and then there's like that extended hold the follow through yeah. that that book does um i just I, I watched it again this morning and i can't get it out of my mind like that's the first that's the first place my mind went yesterday what are his um, measurables oh let me see he's a good size kid he's 66 205 so Jeez. he has he's got the he's got the ricky council yeah. build but a pro level pro level shot for right sure. and he's obviously got just a 
a ton of suitors. I mean, every yeah. power program in the in the country is going to be after this kid, and that was reflected in his list. Um, but what I'll say from the Arkansas front, or or maybe the Calipari front, is you think about what he's done in the transfer portal in recent years, and you think about a Kellen Grady, yeah, and you think about a C.J. Frederick, and you think about Even an Antonio, Antonio Reeves. Reeves, right? He always seems to get a transfer guard slash wing who's a who's a just an absolute. He's got he's got that thing on him, he's got that strap from yeah. three. So you pay attention when you see a guy like this, and you think about like Dayton. That's a that's a, a well known program. It's a mid major program, but like Antonio Reeves. He was a mid-major guy. Kellen Grady, he was uh, Davidson, right? Yes. So, you know. And then C.J. Frederick, he was Iowa, but he was injured, and then he came back. And so it's like these, you know, second-tier or uh, Tier 1A dudes who are just absolute. They got ropes on them. Yeah. And you, and you bring them in, and, and they fill it up. So I would pay attention to this one. Absolutely. And I can't think of a reason why Arkansas wouldn't be all over that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's got my attention, man. I think I, last season, last season, Cal really corrected what his teams had been missing, which was you know just knock down shooters, and it's yeah. not just one but multiple. Um, it's Bray kid, dude, second nationally in true shooting percentage, which is unbelievable when you think about like yeah. seventy five to eighty percent of the shots he's putting up are threes. Um, knows his role. Put shots up. Don't turn the ball over. He had, um, he had seven games last year where he turned the ball over twice. He didn't have a game with more than two turnovers. Wow! And so it's like the ball's in your hands. You're either a pick and roll guy or you're spotting up, putting shots up. Um, I wanted to show you his shot chart real quick. This would get everybody really excited. Just a reminder that red is good. That's crazy. It's nuts. Yeah, and for those who are listening, there. Are how many pockets on this shot chart? Over a dozen different areas on the floor, yeah. and uh, and they've got it coded like red is red hot, and blue is ice cold. There's one, the super dark spot. The super dark <laughs> red is 15 percent above Division One average, right? And it's Whew. all around the perimeter. And the the crazy thing is, if you want further indication that he is a shooter. He only took 13 shots at the rim last year. Just, wow. Just 13. Um, I like that. Didn't take more than seven shots anywhere outside the outside the lane in, on, in terms of like two-point attempts. But 51% straight away, he was 43 of 83 on the left side of the floor and 34 of 73 on the right. I mean, he's just – he is a knockdown shooter in every every sense of the term. No doubt about it. So one to keep an eye on there. Another guy, and listen, this is this has my interest. And this is another reason why you should go look at John's tweet, because it was in reference to, to Duke's Jeremy Roach. That was I was I was sitting at Flyway last night and my phone started buzzing. And I see that Jeremy Roach, if you're unfamiliar with him, he's a he's he's been a longtime guard at yeah, Duke. Yeah, he was on that Duke team that beat Arkansas to go to the Final Four. Yep. And he was, I think, outside of Filipowski, probably their best player this year. Yeah. Um, had a big game in Bud Walton. He had 22 on the Hogs in Bud high. Walton. They took an L, but, it, you know, he, he was, was really good, good in that game. He's a really, really good player, a veteran, a uh, lead guard, He's played at a high level, played in big-time NCAA tournament games. Like, this is a hell of an addition to the transfer portal. Yeah. He's also testing the draft waters, no surprise, but no sooner than it came out that he hit the portal, uh, you see Adam Zagoria, who knows his stuff, comes out and he says, hey, the three teams you got to watch right now, Arkansas, Kentucky, St. John's. He knew Rick Patino was going to get in So there. we got Slick Rick, <laughs> we got Mark Pope, and we got John Calipari uh, battling it out early for Jeremy Roach. I cannot think of a better lead guard for year one at Arkansas than Jeremy Roach. I mean, that would be yeah. a, just an incredible pickup if they could make that happen. And it sounds like they're going to be in a good spot there. And it's not just because of the NIL bag or, you know, whatever. Like, all, all those things are going to help. But there's a relationship 
that goes back there. And I saw somebody talking about it, and I felt like I recalled this, so I went back and looked this morning. Uh, Arkansas, uh, sorry, Kentucky under John Calipari heavily recruited Jeremy Roach out of high school. He's a five-star prospect. Uh, in fact, he had several predictions logged to go play for Calipari. Uh, several. We're talking the, the crystal balls, the future cast, whatever. Yeah. People thought it was a foregone conclusion, and then all of a sudden he – you know, he winds up at, at Duke with Coach K. Uh, so clearly there was a, a good relationship there with Cal, mm -hmm. good relationship with that staff, and they almost had him. And when you see that, you know, like when we were thinking about early on when we were doing our big board, and one of the, the categories we had when Muss was still the coach was, well, who are some guys that they recruited pretty hard in the past that maybe they could get on the turnaround? Well, same deal here with with Cal and Jeremy Roach. I, I think this is a, a real thing. I think they've got a shot. And uh, man, again, that would be a that would be a great pickup. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, you couldn't be more right about you. You couldn't find a better lead guard for your first season. Um, and it's a, like you mentioned earlier, like he's a vet. Like he's he just finished his fourth year at Duke. Um, and I think. <laughs> Cal's going to make a run at him. I joked with you last night. I was like, look, Cal went after Severe Wheeler. So he's going Facts. to go after Jeremy Roach, too. <laughs> yeah. or he, he, he very well should. Um, I looked up this morning. Jeremy Roach last season had seven games with 30-plus minutes played and zero turnovers. He had another eight games with 30-plus minutes played and only one turnover. Love that. So that is literally just short of half of the games that you played in this year where the guy's playing 30-plus minutes and coughing it up. Right. Maybe once. Yeah. That's exactly what you want in a lead ball handler. And he averaged, what, 14 a game yep. last year? Shot 43% from three. It's crazy. Just under three and a half assists yeah. per game. He's a good one. Yeah. He's a good one. And I would imagine without, you know, seeing Calipari walking his dog on the street and saying, hey, is Jeremy Roach a priority? I can just tell you that he probably is. So there <laughs> sure. we go. Yeah, let us answer that one for you. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, DJ Wagner. I know that we've talked about him, but he's officially entered the portal. Uh, guy who was a highly, highly coveted prospect out of high school. He was the number one prospect in the country for a while uh, and then maintained his five-star status. Played for Cal last year at Kentucky. Ten points per game. Didn't shoot it as well as he probably hoped. Dealt with some ankle injury stuff, but clearly a dude who uh, he has got some, some pro potential there. He's in the portal. Open recruitment, they say. Um, a lot of people that I've talked to just, just still feel strongly that, that he'll ultimately wind up with Cal at Arkansas. So we'll see if he takes some visits and, and hears some people out, but you have to like where Arkansas is at starting this thing off. Yeah. We know that there's a, a big time relationship there with Cal and the Wagner family. Uh, we also know that, that Kenny Payne, the former Louisville coach, but better known for his time as just a, a, a terrific assistant under Cal at Kentucky. Uh, a really strong relationship on the with the Wagner family on his front, and he's in the running for a, for a potential position on staff with Arkansas. I, I think yeah. if they lock that down, you then your chances get really good of getting DJ over. I mean, you just start thinking about the possibilities. Like, what if I don't want to do this to people, but I'm going to. <laughs> what if you had a Jeremy Roach, DJ Wagner, Kobe Brea? <laughs> Backcourt oh my lord, dude. with Big Z in the you're front do, court. You're doing like, what I did the other day with the with the front court guys, <laughs> where he's like, "Yeah, acquaintance and yeah, Big Cliff and <laughs> you know, I don't know, Big Cliff is uh, yeah." So we're, I think we're gonna get into that in a minute, but yeah, yeah I think you I think you just you just had that moment where dude. you probably just got chills down your spine thinking about the yeah. backcourt options. Yeah, and so the possibilities are endless, and I know it it is true. And the field of sixty eight guys kind of got they they ticked me off a little bit last night because it's oh coach he's he's got all of one player right now at Arkansas is Big Z enough like oh what what, what are they going to do well they're going to fill out the roster like they, they just are Kentucky's got two players on their roster right now like it's just it's part of the building process so the, the opener's not next week yeah right exactly so everybody relax a little bit. But you can see, uh, you know, some of the targets that are on the board. They're they're going to be able to fill out a really good team. Yeah. Um, another guy who hit the portal, and I'm interested in your take on this because I know we both really like this dude. Yeah. Aiden Mahaney. Love him. Out of St. Mary's, especially last year as a true freshman. I remember 
What would we do? We must have we must have just covered a game. Yeah, I think we had just covered a game, and we were we were at our respective homes, but it was a late night St. Mary's versus Gonzaga tip. Oh yeah, and we had some action on it. Yeah, it uh, was not this past season, but it was the season, season before, before last. Yeah, right. And St. Mary's ended up winning in, a, in yeah. overtime. And Mahaney, I, re- went I still nuts. remember the bet that I made. I had Gonzaga minus eight. They led basically the whole game until like the 16 minute mark of the second half by seven to nine points. Mahaney goes crazy uh, in that second half. I think he ended up with 18, couldn't buy a three, but he was just like dribble driving Gonzaga to death. Right. Um, and then St. Mary's ends up winning that game in overtime. It was, he's electric. He really is, man. Do you think he is a high major point guard? Yes, I do. But I don't think he's a high major star. Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and he probably didn't even really have the season maybe he thought like he probably didn't make the freshman to sophomore leap that he thought he would or that a lot of people thought he would. Yeah. He still had some really solid numbers. Uh be 6'3, 180 pounds was I don't know if he was the freshman of the year in the in the WCC last year. He should have been if he wasn't. Uh, but but really had a nice freshman campaign. This past year, just under 14 points, 2.6 assists per game. His shooting numbers dropped a little bit from uh, from the previous season, but he's really a he's a gamer, man. And it's interesting to me that he hit the transfer portal because I feel like he's he's tailor made for St. Mary's. Like I don't think yeah. he's ever going to have a, a bigger feature role than where he's at. But maybe he understands that, and maybe he just wants to to test himself at a higher level. But if he's got the right mind frame of hey, you know what? I'll come be a dude in a rotation and I'll knock down catch and shoot threes and I'll create and distribute and share the ball for others uh, and and bring a lot of value in that way. I think he'd be a really, really nice pickup. No doubt. And I'm sure he's going to have a lot of suitors. He's a California kid who who played at St. Mary's, so I don't know if he wants to stay out that way or if he's open to other opportunities. I don't even know I how Eric interested. Musselman's going to be crazy interested. Oh, Muscle be all over that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. To me, he seems like a um maybe a a pickup for a cream of the crop Mountain West team. Right. To me. Yeah. Um and maybe I, I agree. and maybe like there's a maybe there's a fit at some particular Big 10 or ACC schools. Like that's kind of what it what it feels like to me. Yeah, I don't know. That's not a slight to him. I love the kid. He's oh, he's, an, yeah. he's an electric watch. Yeah, I mean he was he was he was thirty eight point six percent from the field this year, and so I wonder like how is he going to be able to finish against the athletes in the SEC? Is he going to be able to guard the athletes in the SEC? So I don't know. So I'm intrigued by him. I uh, love him as a player. I'm going to be really interested to see what the list looks like in yeah. terms of teams that are that are prioritizing them. For sure. And we don't know if Arkansas has reached out yet or if, if they even will, but that's a very notable name that hit the portal definitely late last night. So yeah, you know his his per game average scoring averages were the exact same freshman to sophomore year, but his field goal percentage dipped a little bit. Right. There you go. Um okay let's move let's move to the big men here. Because mm. yesterday was weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yesterday was a weird one. Um Umar Balo, the the big center from Arizona, seven foot, two hundred and sixty pound, double double averaging dude. We we knew that Arkansas was in there for him, but but probably had some ground to make up on that front. And within the matter of an hour on Tuesday, he canceled a visit to Louisville, was set for a visit to Arkansas, and then he committed to Indiana. <laughs> And so what that tells me is that visit to Arkansas was probably quietly already on the docket, and then it just got leaked out there, um, and that he was he was pretty much already committed to to Indiana. Yeah. And it sounds like they're giving him a pretty good pretty good bag uh, yeah, to do that, like which I don't ask- know how that works because I think he's an international player, but seems whatever. Seems like the asking price was. Ooh, buddy. Yeah. That's a it's a chunk of a lot of programs NIL, a right. lot of programs entire NIL. No doubt about it. Bag. 
and I know a lot of people were excited about that possibility. Like, geez, oh, sure. you get Omar Ballo with uh, with Big Z. Like, yeah, man. he's a Ballo's an extraterrestrial man. Right, he really yeah. is. <laughs> he really, really is. And, and so you didn't get that. And I don't know if that was ever something we really should have counted on. Uh, but it did make me start thinking about, and I'm I'm working on a story about this right now that we'll have on the site later. But I just wonder how the rest of the front court is going to shake out around Z because for for a period of time there's been a lot of really good bigs in the portal um but they're starting to come off the board we saw Malik Diaz Kel Brown Jones guys like that are are off to Ole Miss we see Umar Balo now off to Indiana uh and so it's starting to thin out a bit Victor Locken who's a a guy who I think is actually a really really underrated player Mm -hmm. uh from Cincinnati he he committed to Clemson this morning I thought he could have been a an under the radar guy maybe to look at. So it's interesting. Um, obviously I, I think it probably starts with, do you get these freshmen? Can you, can you convince Cyril Samto Cyril to come over? Yeah. Um, do you, do you have the, well, you have the bag. Are you willing to, to give the bag required to get Jaden Quinn's mm-hmm. in? And even if you, let's say you get one of those guys, I mean, you still need more. And so who are they going to go get out of the portal? I wonder to help fill out that front court, do they go for the star power, or do we see, you know, kind of an under the radar type pickup, uh, a role player type guy? I I don't know. I'm very interested to see uh, the the first name that. Well, I'll say this by the way, people were a little upset, I guess, about Big Cliff yesterday because he's like there there are 12 schools that he's focused on or whatever, and, and Arkansas wasn't one of them. Uh, Travis Branham. National recruiting analyst with 24-7 Sports uh, who who had lived in Lexington, so he's followed Cal and his staff pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was on a local radio station today, and, and he was talking about, you know, like, don't don't rule out Arkansas getting involved here because when a guy's been in the portal this long and he's a, a top 10 type of portal talent, Big Cliff is the, the big center, just an, an absolute defensive stopper from Rutgers, by the way, for those who are, who are unfamiliar. Um but when you have a situation like that, that tells you that a guy is open. Sure. Right? He's very open. And obviously Arkansas has got the the NIL backing and and Calipari's got the the track record of getting guys to the league where it could be a really impe- appealing option, you know, if they want to get involved there. No doubt so he didn't it. rule it out. And so we'll see about that. We know that uh you know, on 3, Jamie Shaw was reporting earlier in the week that you know, big Jonas Adu out of Tennessee, yeah, that, that Arkansas him. is going to be one of the the teams heavily in the mix there. Sounds like North Carolina is another one that's going to be mm-hmm. really heavily involved. But, you know, so there's some some big name options there. Uh, Great Osabor, the big fella out of out of Utah State, who just he kind of came out of nowhere, honestly, and, and had a really, really good year. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Uh, maybe a name they could get involved with. So... There's there's options, but I'm just going to be really intrigued to see how it shakes out with the freshmen. One, do you get both of them? Because that would change things. You only get one of them. What if you get none of them? Uh, the, they're going to need to add at least one more transfer big and maybe two. Yeah. And we're not even talking about then, you know, guys who are going to play the, the power forward position. However, Cal wants that to look like. Like, is it going to be a, a traditional two forward look? Is it going to be more of a you know, four out one in type of thing where they've got a, a versatile guy who can, mm-hmm. with some size, who can play the four. I have no idea. So uh, it, it's going to be something to kind of keep an eye on. I know you sent you sent a, a text this morning about great Osibor. Yeah. Dude, I looked into him. He's just, like you mentioned, he just kind of emerged last season. And Crazy, I, man. I texted you back and was like, I know that name, but I watch a whole lot of Mountain West basketball. Um, Because normally I fall asleep these days before before their games start um, (laughs) on the West and in the Pacific time zone, but um, his stats his stat line is crazy from last year. Almost 18 points a game, nine boards, almost three assists, 1.4 blocks, and 1.3 steals for a guy six eight two fifty. That like that those numbers don't make sense for a guy that's that size. 16 games with 10 plus boards, and one thing that. You know, anytime I'm looking into a guy that's in the portal and, you know, trying to figure out if he's really about it or not, mm-hmm. you look at some of the, obviously, you look at some of the best teams that he's played. Last year, Utah State played San Diego State three times. 
had 17.7 boards twice against them. And then the third meeting had 19 points, five rebounds, three blocks. That second meeting, Curtis, he had 17 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, two blocks, and two steals. Jeez. He's just – he's he's a stat sheet stuffer. Yeah, in, I'll say. In every sense of the words. But he's a number 18 available player in the portal as of this morning. And I'm just – I think I'm – right now I think I'm fixated on Jonas Adu. Me too. I really am. Like I think – like there's – I think there's a lot of value in – having a guy on your roster who's you know spent significant time in the league already and he knows mm -hmm. he knows what to expect year in and year out game in and game out and it like every single venue that you can go in um he's just he's solid as they come if you have a a jonas adu big z kind of platoon at the at the five good luck yeah it's crazy. i mean it, that's crazy and if you get a guy like a like acquaintance or whatever it takes pressure away from him to – now, he's a he's a grown man, don't get me wrong. But he's only 16 years old. I guess he, mm -hmm. maybe he'll be 17 when he gets to college. But, um, you know, maybe he's not defending SEC centers so much, and you can slide yeah. him more to that four spot and, and take a little bit of pressure off of him. Uh, the and rebounding the, would be crazy. Like, oh, it would be nuts, no, man. No rebounds available for anybody. Right. So we'll, we'll see. And the other thing to keep in mind here, too, we still have – right at two weeks left before the, the portal window closes. And we saw it a little bit yesterday, but the truth of the matter is there's going to be a lot more big names that become available because these kids are trying to cash every NIL check that they can yes. before they hit the portal. Yep. Like it's saw, just the way it is, yeah, man. I saw that tweet last night. It's somewhat, <laughs> I think it was Jeff Goodman was like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of good names going in because these kids are waiting on their, their last – Oh, he's a hundred percent right by yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean so that's just that's just gonna happen and then the other thing to keep in mind is more guys will hit the portal last minute and test the draft waters and yeah. so we have to wait out that process and then grad transfers can enter whenever they want right so it's just like the portal closes on May 1st or whatever for you know undergrad transfers but yeah i mean if, if you qualify as a grad maybe you got to finish up a summer class or something those dudes can hit the portal whenever they want so it's not like we've got two weeks left and then the 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 pool is empty that's not really the case so it, it there's still going to be some names come available but there's still a lot now for them to work with so it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out ideally in my mind just thinking about the front court get one of those freshmen I'd love it if they got both of them. Get one of them and then get yourself a another center mm -hmm. out of the transfer portal and maybe somebody a little bit more versatile at the at the four. Maybe you could play the four or five, but just, you yeah. know, can stretch the floor a little bit and, and do some different things. Yeah. Maybe in the mold of acquaintance. Sure. Uh, but but with a little bit more experience. Yeah, Os Osobor is interesting because he's he's six eight, mm -hmm. but he is he's he's grown. Yeah, you know he's, a, I mean? he's a he's a Large human. <laughs> so I think like him and him and they do, you think about <sighs> their size, their frames, their skill sets, they could potentially play next to each other. Mm -hmm. Like I know that it might sound crazy. And I might be dreaming, but they could fit. I think they could fit next to each other because one of them technically like Osa boards, a power forward. They do is like your true, yeah, your true center type. Well, the guy that's going to bang with Zach Eady in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Type toughness. Yeah. Know. I mean, it worked for Adu and Toby Awaka playing beside each other right. for, you know, for stretches. Sure. And listen, when you've got not just John Calipari, but when you've got chicken man money, it's okay to dream, Scotty. We can do that right now. <laughs> you know? I say that every episode. I've got to, <laughs> I, last week I flipped the mindset and was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to mope over JP Pagese. So and now I've got to get in the mindset that I can, I can dream a little bit with this roster construction. Yeah. Shoot for the stars. You sure. know? Um, okay, well, I think that is uh, that just about wraps us up. You got anything else? We don't today? do short. We don't do short episodes. I just don't. Know we don't. We can really it's a little do bit that. shorter. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna be right at forty minutes. Yeah. And we said before we started, like, oh, let's see if we can do this in about twenty five. So this is about what I figured would happen. <laughs> yeah, but it's same, all good. Same. <laughs> uh, but no, appreciate everybody for for tuning in. And like always, you know, get this stuff out here in the morning for you guys. But if something pops off later in the day. We'll be back, and we'll go live in the process. But 
we're going to get out of here for now. So for Scotty Borderline, it's been Curtis Wilkerson with Natty State Sports. Appreciate you for tuning in to the pod at the Palace, and we will catch you all really, really soon.